Hello everyone, welcome to Medical Speaking Week 8 for Otolaryngology or ENT. Well, the first thing you should know about this module is you know how to pronounce otolaryngology correctly. So, otolaryngologist, it is doctor specialized in ENT, ear, nose, and throat, or head and neck surgery. So, the first assignment all of you should know or should do is pronounce otolaryngology. Okay, so that's the first one. So in this module, we talk about tips in communication with ENT patients. Uh, a couple common terminology I like you to know or be familiar with. I also send you a couple of video from other um, lecturers, but in this short video, I like you to know a couple of key things in ENT for this class. Well, the first thing when you come to see an ENT patient your first question come to mind, what is the chief complaint? Is it ear, nose, throat, or neck, or a combination of those? So you should know one of them, and then you pick one, and you have a plan. Remember, almost every problem you can start with occult. I told you about occult weeks ago, right? So onset, location, durations, characteristic, exosic symptom, relieving factor, and temporal. For example, we're going to talk about headache. This is one of your assignments for the incoming week. So apply to that. Where is the onset? Where is the location of the headache? Is it here, here, or here? The location itself on those history can give you some idea what it is. One other thing is in ENT, usually when you see a patient, if you are a primary care doctor, this is the first time you see the patient and then you can refer to the ENT specialist or otolaryngologist later. Your fundamental question you should ask is what have the patient tried? Because chances they uh, already tried some over counter nasal spray, some common cold medication without improvement, that's when the patient comes to see you. So ENT problem is so common that patient a lot of time they try self-treated, and that's one of the key questions you should ask. Well, past medical history, the key thing about ENT is allergies. A lot of time, ENT special deal with well allergies, so asthma, any neurologic or any rheumatologist, remember a lot of rheumatology problems start with ENT. So, any surgical history, and when you ask about allergies, make sure you ask specifically to what type. Seasonal allergy, pollen, food, Medication, medication, aspirin. So those are the things that you should ask about allergies. Now, social history also very important in ENT. Why? <clears throat> because if someone's smoking, the chance that they have cancer will be higher, in particular the area of mild cancer. So you ask those questions about social history. Family history, does any allergy history run in the family? Any ENT problem run? In the family. So all the issues um, include tinnitus, ringing ear, vertigo, hearing loss, otasia or otorrhea. Otasia, pain in the ear, otorrhea, uh, drainage. So the other thing is you like to ask about congestion, rhinorrhea, epitaxis, or nose bleeding, decreased smell. Uh, those are the key thing when you want to ask patient. Now when you ask more about history, make sure that you ask about their voice. If somebody comes with a hoarse voice, they change their voice, any nose when they're breathing, difficulty breathing, any pain with speaking, or odynophonia. So those are the terms you should know to odynophonia. Uh, trachea, noisy, difficulty breathing. Then you ask about neck problems, any problem with any swollen nerve, any lymphadenopathy or any bumps, pain and swollen. Okay, so that's a very short tip history when you talk to an ENT patient. Now, when it comes to exam the patient, this is so crucial. In communication skill, when you exam ENT patient, a lot of time you come very close, like this, even closer, okay? The distance between you and patient gets so close that in communication we call personal space. Personal space is usually one or two feet, like hugging 
a lot of time they 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 feel like you are hugging them because you need to look at their ear, look at their mouth. So what you should do is make sure you brush your teeth, you have a good breath, and if if you you have some problem, make sure you have some gums. And of course, you don't want to smell it. You don't want to have put a lot of perfumes, a lot of smell, because remember, a patient have allergies, and you come to see a patient, and you have a lot of smell. I know it's it's, it's pleasant smell. It smells good, but a lot of people it's allergies. So don't do that. So pay attention to those details. Um, you can use tool in in the exam, include pen light, uh, any tongue blaze, nasal spatulum. Uh, otoscope uh, the, again the otoscope is the you can look at it to the nasal exam as well as the, the ear in ENT observation is the key just like any type of physical examination right you observe the patient you want to see how the patient look how the patient feel a lot of time their facial expression can tell you whether they sick or not uh, their facial expression can tell you they like you or not and you have to be careful, observe patient while talking to the patient. So communication skill, again, in ENT patient, just keep really good observation. Facial expression is the key. Now, uh, in the last couple minutes, I'd like to tell you some tips in particular organs. The first one, when you examine ENT patient or auto legomology patients is the ear exam. You look from outside to go inside, and the kids look for a deformity. Is two ear look equal, or one of them get bigger, one of them get smaller, or the area? One thing that I like to emphasize to my students or my residents is they forgot to test about the area around the ear or called periarticular, because a lot of time psoriasis patient they have skin problems. It's happened right here, and you don't see that on the skin or on the knee. It's happened right here. So the area around the ear is a part of the exam. When you look at the ear, don't look at it inside first. Look outside, look around the ear. And then you, ex you proceed to the external auditory canal. From here, you look for erythema, retina, stenosis, narrowing, any debris, anything in between, or any discharge. So that's the key thing. When you look at that, observe and notate that. Look at tympanic membrane is a shiny, translucent, visible with light reflex. And those are the key term when you like to communicate with your uh, colleagues is normal TM, shiny, translucent, visible light. Why? Because if patients have tympanal sclerosis, so or the hardening of the inside of the tympanic membrane, you will see weight and you see cloudy. Okay? Any area of erythema, budging, dual retraction, perforations. Those are the things that you look for tympanic membrane. When you talk about a, a procedure called pneumatic autoscopy, so basically the autoscope you put right here, you compress a little air and you should see the TM moving a little bit. Uh, it's called the motility of tympanic membrane. And this can tell you whether the patient has a middle ear infection or not. Now, Moving on to that, uh, to the ear exam, there's a, a thing that always, almost medical student resident, and even some attendings, uh, we forget, we call a uh, toning port exam. So there's two one, the Rainier exam and the uh, Weber exam. So in the Rainier exam, this is we measure the conduction between air versus bone conductions. So you hit it, and you put just outside the ear like this, and then you put it over the master process. And usually the air conduction will last longer than bone conduction, that's the normal. If anything less than that, that will be abnormal. The web burl, remember W, you put a tonin probe in, in between your ear, no, I'm sorry, between your uh, forehead, and then you hit, and then you should hear equal sound from both sides. Um, so that's the normal one. Moving on to the, the no exam, this is one of the exams that people often forget because they just look outside. They like they not to look inside. Now, for no, the external one, you look for symmetry, any sign, any patency, any hole, or anything that's abnormal. You use a, a spatulum to look at that. Uh, there's a tool called nasal spatulum, or we also call the interior rhinoscopy. You can look from that from the front of the nose. 
Uh, you should look for uh, septums, yeah, inferior turbinates. See if any septal deviations, any boggy or any pale turbinates, mucosa, hypertrophy, or inferior turbinates. Look for any rhinorrhea, blood uh, uh, discharge. Look for masses and look for vessel. Um, so those are the key things when you look inside the nose. Usually, uh, both of them look symmetrical. So if you see one thing in this side, and you don't see the other thing in the other side, you say, oh, it could be something abnormal. I remember a God or Mother Nature make us almost symmetric in both sides. So one thing here, and you can compare the other side. And that's one of the key findings in ENT, make sure they're always symmetrical. Now, uh, moving on to the mouth exam. This is one of the exams that a provider sometimes we often forget uh, because we just look and we don't really pay a lot of attention on a couple of things. Well, first of all, you like to look for and make sure you use your tongue blades. A lot of time I told my student or resident, make sure you use a tongue blade for several reason. Some patients, they have a reflex, they can bite. If you put your hand barely to someone's mouth, you will offer a free bite from the patient. Okay, so don't do that. And especially if it's a psych patient, you never know what's gonna happen. So make sure you use your tongue blades because there's a reason why you use that and just in case if you can just take it out. Now, uh, look for any type of buccal mucosa, any palatal mucosa, lingual mucosa, or vestibular mucosa. So those are things that you look for. Look for denture. Remember, you don't have to be a dentist. But you should know what a gingivitis look like. You should know what a cavity look like. And obviously, mouth oral health is the key finding in many uh, health issues. Many cardiovascular disease start with the mouth. You, know, you should know that, right? Um, so look for any masses when you feel, use a tongue blazer, you look for any mass or anything like that. And one last thing, when a patient is okay, and if you feel comfortable with, check the patient's saliva. This is one of the key findings in many conditions, uh, especially in uh, ENT, because they may have their saliva uh, gland swollen, and that could be an underlying issue of a cancer or some type of thing. So make sure you, you check that. Um, one last thing about the mouth is you can grade the tonsil. The tonsil is the organ that sometimes make a lot of problems to people, especially they, people with obstructive sleep apnea. Because if their tonsil get big, they could not uh, breathe freely, and then we have issue with uh, take a deep breath. And at that time, you your grading a tonsil will tell um, the other provider what's going on. Start with a zero to four. Number zero usually normal. Number one, I you is just less than twenty five percent. Of four, it's completely obstructed. You cannot see it. It's really big. You cannot see anything behind the tonsil. It's number four. Two and three is in between. Two usually about 50%, three 75%. Moving on to the last part of this, is uh, we call the neck exam. So we talk about the ear, nose, mouth, and then we move to the neck. Next, one of the last one, but check for any swollen lymph node, any lymph adenopathy, check for thyroid. And one thing is make sure you check for range of motion. Uh, this is the time that exam many provider forgot. When the motion simply you ask patient just do this, turn left to right. Those two key findings in the next exam that many people forget is in rheumatoid arthritis, if they have a severe C1, C2 deformities, or they people with ankylosing spondylitis, their neck exam range of motion very limited. It's just like this, and that's it. You so that can give you some hint. Um, and the other issue, a lot of people with thyroid issue, make sure you check for their lymphadenopathy on both sides. It's not just one side. All right, so those are things that I like all of you focus and think about when you see an uh, ENT patient or you want to become an auto laryngologist. The assignment for this week is you will pick a topic that you like to know quite well. And I think uh, just pick some simple one, such as headache. Now, you can go a little bit further, like um, autistic media infections or uh, uh, rhinitis, it's up to you. But I, when you present, you be the doctor and I'll be your patient. You tell me what's going on and you explain to me. So that's the assignment for the week. All right, and see you in class.
À, chào các bạn, chúng ta đang ở tuần thứ 9 của cái module là về à, giải phẫu, phẫu thuật đầu mặt cổ hoặc là khoa tai mũi họng. Trong chuyên khoa này, tôi muốn các bạn học được một cái từ mà bất kỳ bác sĩ nào cũng gặp vấn đề khi mà đọc là từ bác sĩ chuyên khoa tai mũi họng hay còn gọi là otolaryngologist. À, bạn đọc chậm và đọc theo tôi, otolaryngologist. Ok, so that's the chuyên khoa in TL, head and neck surgery, ear, nose and throat. Trong cái module này có một số điểm quan trọng mà tôi muốn các bạn trong lớp medical speaking phải nắm rõ. Thứ nhất, khi các bạn khám bệnh về tai mũi họng, một trong những điều đầu tiên nhất là bệnh sử. Bệnh sử rất là quan trọng trong tai mũi họng. Phần lớn bệnh nhân khi họ gặp vấn đề về tai mũi họng, họ đã thử dùng thuốc bên ngoài. Ví dụ như uống thuốc này để cho thông mũi, uống thuốc kia cho bớt ho. Khi mà bệnh nhân đến gặp bạn thì có lẽ họ đã thử rồi, thành ra bạn nên hỏi À cô ơi, cô thử cái gì rồi? À, bác thầy bác thử cái gì rồi trước khi mà bạn đi thẳng vào vấn đề và cái thứ hai nữa là bệnh sử trong tai mũi họng rất là quan trọng về mặt dị ứng dị ứng tới mùi dị ứng tới phấn dị ứng tới thuốc hay bất kỳ cái dị ứng nào nhớ hỏi về hút thuốc 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 lá á phiện cần sa đủ đã thuốc hết chứ không chỉ riêng thuốc lá tại vì có nhiều thứ cái tác dụng của thuốc lá hay là cocaine hút trên mũi khác với thuốc lá hút vô phổi thành ra bạn phải hiểu là thuốc, hút thuốc, nó chỉ không đơn giản là thuốc lá mà gồm có áp viện, gồm có cocaine, hàng trắng, cần sa, rất nhiều thứ khác và hỏi nha, tại vì phần lớn họ sẽ hút qua đường miệng, một số người hút qua đường mũi và đây là những dấu hiệu bạn cần phải biết à, Thêm nữa về bệnh sử, hỏi về bệnh sử của gia đình, có ai có bị cái này hay không, trước giờ có ai bị không à, Một số từ tôi muốn bạn biết là dysphagia, uh, difficult swallow hoặc là odinophagia, khi mà họ đau, họ, họ nuốt và họ đau, đây là những từ rất là cơ bản Um, thêm nữa là khi mà họ đau khi họ nói gọi là odinophobia đây là những từ mà các bạn cần phải biết và nói chuyện với trong ngành bác sĩ với nhau ok um, trong cái phần mà khám bệnh của khoa à, tai mũi họng có một số từ tôi muốn các bạn cần phải hiểu là khi các bạn khám bệnh tai mũi họng chúng ta rất là gần với bệnh nhân gần như là mình ôm người ta vậy cái không gian cá nhân gần như là nó sát nhau Thành ra cái quan trọng nhất của bạn là bác sĩ Thứ nhất là bạn đừng có bị hôi miệng à, Thật sự nếu tôi bệnh nhân tôi không muốn ai khám cái mũi hay miệng tôi mà bị hôi miệng Tại vì oh my gosh, cái là không có thể là tệ hơn cái đó nữa Ok, thành ra đừng bao giờ đi bị hôi miệng à, Và nhớ đừng có sức quá nhiều mùi Và nếu như có mùi, đừng có đến gần quá bệnh nhân Tại vì khi mà họ đến bạn có thể họ có vấn đề về mùi rồi à, Và khi mà khám bệnh nhớ đi theo cái hệ thống Chúng ta đi từ tai, mũi và họng cứ đi như vậy Và khám tai một điểm rất quan trọng là khám sau bàn tay Rất là nhiều bệnh lý, ví dụ như là bệnh lý về da Thì chúng ta lại quên mà không thấy được những cái bệnh vẩy nến phía sau chúng ta như vậy à, Thêm một điều nữa à, Khi mà khám tai mũi họng Phần lớn mặt chúng ta là đối xứng Thành ra một cái gì mà bự hơn hoặc là nhỏ hơn bên này mà bạn không thấy Thì bạn có thể tự hỏi là Oh, what's going on? Và bằng cách bạn sẽ tìm hiểu kỹ hơn Khám tay một bên Và thường là khám cái bên bình thường trước Như tao bên phải khám bên trái trước, tại vì bạn thấy cái bên bình thường trước, bạn sẽ thấy cái bên mà không bình thường, ok? và cái phần còn lại tôi có nói tí xíu về khám mũi và khám miệng, nhớ khám những cái cơ quan bên trong và khám tiếng nước miếng, tiếng nước bọt, đây là những cái rất là quan trọng trong việc có một số bệnh lý à, chúng ta có thể bỏ qua nếu mà không khám những cái bệnh này. À, quan trọng hơn là khi vào bạn khám bệnh như vậy, nhớ dùng cái gọi là thân depressor, nhớ cái cây đốt vô, đừng bao giờ để cái tay của mình mà nếu mà dùng khám tay nhớ mang găng tay bạn không bao giờ biết bệnh nhân của bạn có bệnh gì và bạn không bao giờ mang theo muốn lấy những cái bệnh đó ok như vậy thì ở tuần này chúng ta sẽ gặp nhau trong lớp và cái assignment cho các bạn là chọn một cái chủ đề và nói về chủ đề đó giải thích và chúng tôi sẽ đóng vai trò là bệnh nhân ok see you in class and have fun in medical speaking with dr trend with md thank you